I'm Andy. I'm Melissa. And I'm Jack. And together we're working on restoring our sailing yacht. Some of you might think we're crazy taking on the challenge of restoring this boat and creating a life less ordinary. And we're sure there will be blood, sweat and tears, but it'll all be worth it when we embark on our epic adventure around the world. week to start with I am doing one of those jobs that I've been putting off for a while and working around the window frames on the outside of the pilot house and they're in a pretty bad shape so that's what I'm tackling so here are half of one of the window frames well this is the top half they're in four sections or one side even and as you can see they're pretty gummed up. So I'm going to clean those up and see what they look like. Yeah, so these are from here. There and there. Like so. This was fairly quite a bit of scale in there. So I've had to clean, clear all that out. We need new window frames, really, eventually. Um, but we just want to make sure that they're secure and watertight. I mean, this window is not going anywhere. It's well and truly stuck in. I'm not, I'm not taking the windows out. There's nothing wrong with the frame on the inside. Um, there was just this bit of corrosion here and obviously the, the build up of, um, I don't know what you call it on aluminium, is it? Yeah, the build up of corrosion on the back of, on the back of there. It's raining now so I've had to stop with the um, with the power tools I don't want to get electrocuted um, but the good news is on this side it looks like that first window that I'd taken half the frame out of is the only one with any scale or corrosion um, actually behind the window frame so that's really good really good news so it means that these two on this side can stay in completely. I just need to clean up the old um, sicker and butyl and stuff and paint around the window frames and then I can sicker and butyl or whatever we decide to use in there. So slowly getting there with the prep of the pilot house. Um, this is probably the only bad bit of scale left on the boat, um, apart from the few bits that we've got to do under the keel. But this lip, which is really difficult to get to, um, is quite scaly. Um, so I've got the worst of that off, I need to do some more to it. Um, and a bit of sanding around the windows, They're almost ready, um, but Jack and I are have a break because the boat's looking pretty dirty um, and we're going to give it a bit of a scrub.
another day. As you see, you're probably wondering what these boxes are. They're a bunch of books. Yes, as you can see, I'm very excited. Okay, first one, heaviest first. That's a card. It's from Annie Stewart, Tess, Chris Anderson. Oh yeah, Slipstream. He's a Sea Bream 34. Do pay us a visit one day. Dear Jack, I do hope that you enjoy these books. Our two did. You certainly are an inspiration to us all. We love the videos and look forward to our weekly update. Always full of interesting, amazing stuff. Great music too. Thank you from all of us, the Anderson clan. We're back at that time of year when uh, the weather gives us days that we can do stuff outside and days, days that we can't. Uh, but today we've actually got a reasonably still day with no rain, so it's a metal working day for outside. Uh, but that's why we're doing the jobs in the order that we're doing them. So we're back in the cockpit today, uh, grinding back some of these welds and doing some more fabrication. Something Ian has recommended I do uh, is to sacrifice a weld just to see how my welding is. Uh, so I welded this piece together yesterday, just two bits of scrap on both sides. Uh, and I'm going to cut down the middle of that weld to see how good the penetration is. But I don't know, that looks all right to me. That's been out in the rain all night, but I'm gonna cut straight down the middle of that weld to see what the weld looks like when I've cut it in half. So there's the weld cut in half. I'm pretty happy with that. There's a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of cavitation there in the middle. Um, but I don't think that would cause me any problems and the majority of the weld is absolutely solid all the way through. That's I'm happy with that. I can't hear you, hang on. I said that's only with one pass and you were stick welding. Yeah, that, that's one pass. So I didn't do a root weld and a cap weld. I just did a weld from one side and a weld from the other. And I actually, I hadn't put a 45 degree on these either um, to chamfer the edges. So um, uh, normally I chamfer the edges at 45 degrees so I get even better penetration but I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that I don't think that's uh, that's no problem As you may have noticed, there's a big hole in the back of the transom where we've decided to put in a gate. Um, the gates are going to go home, they need a bit more work. Um, but the, when the weather is turning, it's now um, starting, starting to change, starting to get a bit more windy. So we're down.
down in tools for a bit, having a quick tidy up um, before the wind picks up even more and we're going to build a cover so we can continue work in the cockpit. So just wear forward of there a bit, just slightly. Well I got in trouble the other day because I was wearing this lovely white uh, jumper top and picked up a horrible rusty piece of metal uh, and held it under my arm and now I've stained my lovely white top so I'm going to change in a minute um, because I've got to go and do something today although I'm going to show you outside now uh, show you what we've been up to the last few days and you'll see it's pretty grim I can actually talk a little bit now I'm starting to be able to eat a little bit better you remember last week I had a um, few stitches in my mouth from an operation and I'm starting to get a little bit better but uh, excuse the fact that I sound a little bit funny so what have we been doing well <laughs> it's chucking it down and it's blowing a gale um, so we're back into October in the UK now and it's uh, it's not nice but um, that has meant that we've had to put the canopy back up but unlike last year we've gone at it slightly differently I managed to get some aluminium scaffolding poles and get some corners so we've now got um, a reasonably rigid framework over the back cockpit um, I need to get a better tarpaulin to put over it because this one's full of holes but uh, but the structure at least is good um, what else have we done let's uh, I've got a dead cat on the uh, on the microphone so I'm hoping that the wind noise isn't too bad and that it's legible but we've spent the last few days grinding back a lot of these welds and the tarpaulin has been useful for that so um, you'll remember when I when I modified the cockpit and did a lot of welding earlier in the year um, I just welded the panels in so all of those welds need grinding back and making uh, pretty so I've been doing that well Melissa to be honest has been doing the most of that um, while I've been refabricating the back end of the boat we have made the decision we are going with a cockpit gate um, I've cut out the two sections as you'll have seen and I can use those as the cockpit gate if I, I think they might be a bit on the heavy side because they're steel in some ways that's a good thing because it means they'll be very strong if we hit hit by a following wave uh, but the other side is if they're heavy and they shut on somebody's fingers that might be a downside so I'm, I'm undecided as to what I'm going to make the cockpit gates out of but we've now got uh, a very very rigid structure across the back there and the bathing platform top has now been made in steel with an opening hatch in it so we can now open this hatch in the bathing platform it's not it's not secured down but that's an easy job so we can now get it use that for storage for fenders and ropes so this is kind of what the cockpit now looks like uh, it makes access to the cockpit a lot easier um, and let me show you what else we've got this is where I'm gonna to get told off again um, in the back of the van we've got that which is our new bowsprit that is it's 68 or so. what I needed was a piece of tube that was 68 millimeters outside diameter to go inside the, the what's left of the old bowsprit um, I can't get that this is 67.3 so that's actually won't be a bad thing because I mean I've got I can prep it really nicely for welding and it's 6.2 mil wall so that's crazy strong let me put that back there we're going to shove that into the old bowsprit in a bit and see how long we need it to be and then here hang on what I've got here are two two meter lengths of stainless flat bar 10 millimeters thick and these are going to be what I use to make the new chain plates which are going to go through the roof of the uh, coach roof uh, onto the back of the transom and everywhere else that we need the chain plate so I've got plenty of this 10 mil stainless flat bar which I will weld to the mild steel using a dissimilar metal rod and then paint over the weld uh, I've had lots and lots and lots of discussions with engineers and fabricators and metallurgists and what have you and I've been assured that welding this stuff to the mild steel uh, using a dissimilar metal rod um, is absolutely fine and won't cause me any problems so long as I I've got it all painted over so basically the only bit that will be left showing is the top of the steel where the hole is drilled through where the cotter pin for the rigging goes in so this is the old bowsprit um, the tube goes on the underneath and it's got the platform and everything on in the places for the winches to go um, all we're going to be doing initially is replacing the piece of tubing 
Um, and what I'm interested in is how far is it from that corner to the end, and it's 33 inches. What I've got to find out is how far into the original piece of tubing does this go to see, I think it's going to be about that far, so yeah. that we can sleeve it in and cut it off. But I'm glad I bought this much. Yeah. Um, because in actual fact, we want the new bowsprit to come out a bit further because my plan is to put a, an attachment on for a, um, a spinnaker. So let me show you the original piece of tubing that I'm talking about. The new, the new piece of tubing, the new piece of tubing has got to go inside that. without whacking it with something, with a mallet and a piece of wood, but it's an absolutely perfect fit. Yeah. Um, it's much thicker, much heavier duty than the original. Uh, sleeves in there, a fair old amount. So I'm, when we've got a nicer day, today's not the right day for this, but we'll whack that in as far as we can, uh, mark where it goes into, and we can see how far in it's gone then. And then I can construct the rest of the bowsprit platform and the anchor rollers onto that new piece of tubing and then hopefully it'll just come in and just slot nicely into place it's raining today so we'll have a family day today and hope you've enjoyed the episode see you next time and yes i'm wearing christmas pajamas <laughs>